From having a built-in keyboard equipped with the hardware to actually monitor how much sun exposure you had during the day, the Apple Watch is an impressive machine with multiple different unique capabilities. So in today's video, we'll be primarily focusing on the Apple Watch SE, including the SE2, to show you that even the base entry-level Apple Watch is capable to do mostly all the important things you expect to find on the most expensive model. So timestamps and everything else will be in the video description down below, and I'll be showing you what this Apple Watch SE second generation can do so you can unlock it to its full potential. Let's start by talking over a keyboard. You see, the Apple Watch SE do not support a keyboard, but they have access to the App Store, which allows you to download like third-party apps like FlipType Keyboard, which is the app I recommend, but there's many others if you just search up keyboard on the Apple Watch App Store. And this allows you to basically send a message right here by launching the app, type in whatever you like it to say, even supports autocorrect too. And then once you're done, tap the send icon, add the contact, and then just tap send. And that is how you no longer have to worry about using scribbles or dictation to reply the messages. Another thing about the Apple Watch SE a lot of people tend to forget is the fact that this thing has a lot of storage. You see, the, even the second generation SE has over 30 gigs of internal storage. So if you're subscribed to Apple Music, you could actually install your playlist on the Apple Watch itself so you don't have to have your iPhone nearby. So here's my iPhone 13 and to install, you simply scroll down and look for music. And right here where it says playlist plus albums, you can either tap your playlist or dedicated artists, tap on the playlist you've created and then hit the little plus button on top and it'll basically give you a live live status right there on your playlist being installed on your Apple Watch physical internal hard drive, which will then unlock the ability to use your AirPods or even third-party headphones and pair them to your Apple Watch wrists in the Bluetooth settings. And then if you have a smart TV that is compatible or an Apple TV box equipped to that television, by launching the remote app on your Apple Watch, this gives you total freedom to control your television all off your wrists, and it works extremely well. Another convenient feature can be the remote camera app. By launching this, this will launch the native camera app. As you see, we have a viewfinder of what our Apple Watch or our iPhone sees right here displayed on our Apple Watch, and you have full control to the ultra wide lens too by using the digital crown. It's super neat and awesome. But if you use like an Apple Watch loop band, what I like to mainly use this for is strapping on the back portion of my Apple Watch, and then just tighten it, and then launch that same app, switch to the rear best camera, and then just use this to take like a massive group photo whenever you have to take those family selfies and you can't seem to find somebody else. That's a nice little hack right there. Additionally, the Apple Watch does have a calculator app where if you're dining with friends, you can switch to a tip percentage right here and divide to how many people are with you. So each need to pay $16 each to cover $67, including a 20% tip. If you don't see this tip percentage, you can locate it in the settings of the Apple Watch and go down until you find the calculator app settings. And you can see the tip function or the percentage. And then if you ever need access to a web browser, just ask Siri, google.com. What do you want to search for? Tech news. I found this on the web. And then scroll down to the website you want it to open, tap open page. And here you see we have whole website access right here on our wrist. Perfect whenever you're trying to do re last minute research and you don't have access to your phone or just trying to prove somebody wrong. You'll find all the common iPhone functions here as well. And you'll find that you could go back like this, go forward or go all the way up to like refresh the web page. Now the Apple Watch is an amazing device to work out with, to track all your data, exercises, GPS, tracking for outdoor runs. But there's a couple things that a lot of people will tend to always forget. You see, the workout app, you can actually customize it. So by going into the workout section, launching the dedicated workout app, select the exercise you want, you can either do an open workout, with, which is the native one, the default one, or you can actually time it and you can set the timer if you want to work out during a certain exercise for a certain amount. So like 15 minutes, if you tap done, you can start the workout in that time faction. It's actually a different theme too, as it's yellow. But if you like to make a permit, just go all the way to the very bottom where it says preference. This is where you actually make the time to alert you at a certain time. So if you want to be alerted after 15 minutes that you've done the workout, 
you can set it like this. It'll still be considered an open workout, but it will actually alert you once you're past the 15 minutes. Or you could just do a dedicated calorie goal. Once you hit 100 calories, your Apple Watch will alert you so you can stop your workout if that's where you want to cap. But regardless of what workout you select, this three second timer can be bypassed by simply tapping on the display and you could create different segments by double tapping on the display. Then after a minute has gone by, instead of ending this workout, if you're going to start another one, you can always just tap the plus icon and select the next workout you like to do, like open training. And this way you don't have to end that workout to jump into another workout. It saves it all in one log. I find it more convenient doing it this way. But if you'd like to find out a great app that will actually calculate your calories that you burn, Athlete AI is one I recommend. Here it actually will show me not just my energy level, my stress level, my sleep, if I'm using sleep tracking, I personally don't. But in the energy tab, this will actually tell you how many calories you burn throughout the day, active or not active. And if you link it to like a food login app like MyFitnessPal, you can also track your calorie intakes as well to really make sure that you're in a calorie deficit. Again, that's uh, Athletic AI. I'll have a link in the description down below. There is a membership, but I found out the free version has all the important data that you really need. But it does pair to a native app, which gives me more information compared to what the fitness app from Apple will actually show you by default, which gives you a lot more information, in my opinion, than the default one from Apple. Because uh, this just tells me the calories that I burned with my move goal, but not my calories in total. Now, even though this is not an Apple Watch Ultra, you find that the backtracking ability is also located here by long holding the power button. You could find the backtrack compass. So here you could start like an outdoor hike. You could actually leave landmarks here so you can easily backtrack. So in case you're ready to head back, just hit the pause and then just tap backtrack steps. I've done a couple of hikes and enabling this definitely does make getting back really easy. And then in the Maps app, you'll find that Topograph is actually supported on the Apple Watch SE as well. And then on your iPhone, if you launch the Map app and you tap on your profile right here, this page will prop up and you can actually offload maps from here. And this will also be transferred over to your Apple Watch as well. So, so long as you have your iPhone nearby, your Apple Watch will be able to gather data from your iPhone and offload your maps right here. Now in Control Center, there's a couple unique things I want to go ahead and quickly highlight. So by actually launching theater mode, this will put your devices in do not disturb mode. You'll still feel haptic feedbacks so whenever you receive a notification. But if you cover up your Apple Watch, you're able to use the digital crown to take a quick peek on whatever notification popped up. If you drop something in the movie theater and you enable the flashlight on your Apple Watch, it will default red, allowing you to search whatever you may have dropped in the bottom of your seat without disturbing others around. And red is a nice color because it's known to maintain your night vision, which is why a lot of squad cars have a red dome light in inside their interior of their cars. So it defaults red for that reason. Instead of tapping it once you disable it, it'll default to the white, super bright display. And if you ever misplace your iPhone, we all should be aware of that by tapping the Apple Watch pin right here, it will play a sound, followed by the animation. But if you long hold, this will toggle, it will toggle your iPhone's flash to help you locate it faster, especially for the dark room. And then if you tap your battery life percentage, this is where you could go in and enable your low power mode, which will basically lower the FPS rate on this Apple Watch as possible and turn off background apps as well to preserve as much battery possible out of your Apple Watch. So you don't have to manually go into your Apple Watch settings and turn everything off. In terms of hearing protection, every Apple Watch has the ability to have some type of hearing protection notification. You can find this in the settings of your Apple Watch then scroll all the way down until you find a noise app you can enable it. This will draw a little bit of energy, but not by a whole lot. And you could adjust the notification threshold. So if you've been exposed to like 90 decibels for 30 minutes, your Apple Watch will notify you and also keep logs of everything. So if you find yourself working in a harsh environment, it's good to enable this. This way your Apple Watch can help you maintain your hearing and tell you if you've been exposed to loud decibels for a long duration. And if you like to encourage yourself to wash your hands longer, if you go into hand washing, you could also enable a hand wash timer, which will automatically go off based off the sound and your hand movement. Then you'll see a 20 second timer pop up and we'll congratulate you once you're done. And we'll keep all that log information in your health app. 
Then for the app that allows you to monitor your sun exposure, this is it. Sun exposure, I have a link in the description down below. Gives you a graph of the sun UV rays throughout the day. And will also show you your graph down here and how much of that collection you have gathered. It'll do the average. It'll give you your exact measurement. You can monitor your history all the way from the very past too. Because this data is locked in the Apple Fitness app. But this app unlocks it all for you and it just utilizes the internal sensors that the screen of the Apple Watch has and will continue counting and keeping track of your sun exposure. In terms of emergencies, so long as you have the second generation or even the first generation Apple Watch, you have access to fall detection. It's only the second generation SE that has access to the crash detection. To make sure you have fall detection enabled, just go in your Apple Watch settings. In the Apple Watch settings, go into SOS. Here, tap on fall detection, enable it. You can decide if you want it always on, only on during a workout. I like leaving it always on. And then if you scroll down from here, you'll then find the crash detection, enable that. So if you don't have like OnStar or your vehicle doesn't have like a built-in SOS system, it's good to enable this, but I like to have it on in general, just for a better peace in mind. In terms of just your shortcuts, by simply double tapping the power button, this will bring up your Apple Pay. And then a single tap will bring up your control center. A double tap with the digital crown will bring up your recently opened apps, basically your app switcher. And if you long hold the power button, get to this screen and long hold on digital crown, this will force close any app that's acting funny. And then if you ever find yourself all the way at the very bottom, instead of using digital crown to scroll up, just tap the top portion of the screen and this will defaultly just bring you all the way to the very top. And if you ran out of like complications here on your Apple Watch watch face, remember you could just rotate digital crown and you could add more complications right here. So you could take this out and replace it with another complication you want to have quick access to. And then if you ever receive an incoming call but your iPhone is nowhere nearby but you don't want to just let them go to straight to voicemail, by tapping these little dots right here, you're able to forward a call to answer on your iPhone. So when you get back to your iPhone, you'll see that the call has been picked up just there on hold. And then you could just answer whenever you have the chance instead of losing that phone call. And if you like to switch this phone call from your iPhone and back to your Apple Watch, you can just tap on the little call icon on the top portion here, tap the little arrow with your Apple Watch, you could transfer the call right back to your wrist. And if you like to transfer that call back, on the top portion of your iPhone, just tap on it and the call will be back to your iPhone. And then if you ever receive a FaceTime call, same situation, but your Apple Watch does support FaceTime voice messages, which allows you to review that incoming message off your wrist and play that video there. Now these final ones are some nice bonuses. You see, there's a Shines feature that you can enable on your Apple Watch. You'll find it in your settings. In the clock section, on the very bottom, you can enable chimes and you have two sounds to choose from. What chimes does basically it'll allow your Apple Watch to behave more like a grandfather clock. Every hour you'll receive a small little heptic feedback allowing you to see and understand that an hour has gone by. I find this extremely beneficial especially if you're a workaholic. This app allows me to always be aware of my time instead of having those weird awkward sessions where I'm like, oh man, two hours has gone by, seriously? The Apple Watch will basically alert me every hour, a small little beep on my wrist, letting me know that, hey, a new hour has gone by. But if you feel like you wanna be even more advanced, you like to be five minutes ahead of your appointment, you can separately offset the time on your Apple Watch from your iPhone by going right here where the little plus zero you could add how many minutes ahead you like your Apple Watch to be offset. So now our Apple Watch is going to be default to two, five minutes ahead, so it's 2.13. Meanwhile, my iPhone is still at 2.08. This will allow me to always be ahead of my appointments. More things in here is the swipe to switch watch faces. By enabling this, if you have a lot of watch faces like I do, you can just swipe, and this will allow you to switch between the many different watch faces right here. I like using this feature a lot, especially if you organize your watch faces. I don't know why it glitched like that. By long holding and you go into that watch face edit mode, you can long hold on the watch and you can move it like this. So you can organize it. Or if you want to delay, you can just swipe up and tap delete. But having these two things combined together allows me to quickly like switch between the different watch faces like this. So this one I'll typically like to switch to if I'm like going out on date. And this one I like to switch to if I'm at like at the gym. 
But then if you ever want to quickly share contact information between one Apple Watch user to another, remember you can always use NameDrop, which also works with an iPhone and an Apple Watch. By simply just tapping on their device, it will create this cool animation and both of you will quickly exchange contact information. And then lastly, another amazing convenience about the Apple Watch is that so long as you're nearby, your Apple Watch can actually unlock your Mac computer or your iPhone. You can find these settings on the Mac in the settings in the touch ID and passcode and just select the Apple Watch you like to have this ability. And then for your Apple Watch to unlock your iPhone, you'll find it in the face ID and passcode setting into your login credential and then scroll down till you find the Apple Watch and just enable the Apple Watch you like this ability. And then if you're, and then if you like your iPhone to also unlock your Apple Watch, you'll find this ability in, in the Apple Watch app and you just go into passcode and enable unlock with iPhone. And now you're set. And just like that, now you know a bunch of amazing things that the Apple Watch SE can do. I'll be sure to include links to where you can find those third party apps I recently featured. So they're all literally a click away. And if you'd like to know more creative ways to increase the security on your iPhone, highly recommend checking out that video over there where I dive in all the cool things you need to enable to really maximize your security on your iPhone to make it difficult for thieves to easily steal your device. My name was Eddie. Thank you so much for watching.